doesn't matter what my name is or but i am an android developer uh just for the basic thing though yeah and uh, yeah i know a few of you are lost like what what was the project mickey and what what was the activity what is like intent what is drawable what is our res folder what is layout so how many of you are familiar with basic android terminology like what is an activity who knows like what is an activity nobody so okay i think what we will do is like uh, i'm going to run through a very few basic slides i'm just like quickly going to run through them like for 5 or 10 minutes i'm going to explain what activity is what intent is like what is layout why do you need them and then then we're going to create a very simple application project and then we're going to run that but before that because in my last workshop uh, people have experienced that they were not able to set up the android studio so is there any one who is not able to launch android studio or facing any error with that so everybody is ready with android studio okay cool so starting with my boring presentation it really like what is android some people call it like it's a operating system some people call it like it's a mobile platform it's up to you whatever you call but basically it's not an operating system linux is the operating system and it's just a stack of software on top of uh linux and yeah there are millions of mobile devices which use android now why android some people are like oh there is ios development there is android development now why only android development these are few reasons because definitely there are more jobs for android so i think <laughs> choosing android is more intelligent decision now uh how android came into picture it was initially developed by android inc but google bought it in 2005 and then the first commercial android device came in september 2018 i guess it was by motorola or stc uh, any one of these and then uh, they have been releasing multiple versions of android software and the last was released in december 2017 which was android 8.1 oreo uh what are different kind of android devices like you have android wear you have android tv then you have android mobile of course then android auto and they have been uh, versioning the android operating system based on like sweet desserts so it's like it started with cupcake and nougat and the last was oreo now how do you get android apps so google play this is how it looks like on the right hand side and google play is the market for android apps this this is just like very basic knowledge like what android is where does it come from and then android development like yeah this is a little technical like what do you need for android development so for every development you need a language right so i'm sure like everybody is familiar with some basic programming right so yeah for this we need java java is like mandatory without java you cannot uh, complete android development and kotlin google uh, in 2017 io they announced that kotlin can officially be used as a programming language for android So nowadays like almost all the organizations are uh, migrating their java projects to kotlin even like i work for grab even grab is doing that and uh, how do you test android applications like you can use your phone you can use emulator emulator yeah it sucks like like we just saw and jenny motions and blue stack and there are many more open sourced uh, android devices available for computers as well now as i said that somebody said uh, like some people say it's an operating system and some people say it's a stack of software so this is just to give you an overview like what stack of softwares are involved in android so a typical android phone and a typical android software stack looks like this so in the base we have linux where we where we will have like kernel management thread management multi threading and all the process management on top of that we have hcl which is like hardware abstraction layer which is like in order to access your bluetooth in or in order to access your camera like access all the hardware parts of your phone and then on top of that we have two parts one is android runtime and another one is native library android runtime is basically whatever application you will write in android will be run by android run runtime native libraries it's it's like Android runtime part of Android runtime is written in native like C or C++ that's why we have this support here on top of that we have android framework android framework is basically what is used to develop android application like for example activity manager resource manager notification manager like how do you actually access the android apis in android studio so this is where android framework comes into picture and on top of that any application like whether it's system application sms 
contacts or like your personalized applications. Now, in order to develop an application, what do you need? You need Android Studio. I missed here, you need Java as well. <laughs> Java JDK 8. So, but yeah, Android Studio is the least that you need. Now, now here comes the actual part. Like we talked about activity and something and something and something. So these are the main five components an Android application is comprised of. Okay, first is activity. So as Yulin said, like activity, it's like what you see on screen. Okay, you like in split build, you were seeing, okay, it was saying like, okay, capture the image and then do something. So one single screen represents an activity in Android terminology. Then we have uh, intent. So I prefer to call it like intent comes from intention. So in Android, whenever you want to say like, I want to perform this task. So how do you tell Android that you want to perform this task? You create an intent for that. There are some APIs to create, but and they are called intent. Service. Service is something like, okay, uh, now no Android application is complete without network connections, right? Like even Facebook. In Facebook, you download images, you download like videos, and you do a lot of operations. But what happens is like you're scrolling your timeline, and your images are also getting loaded, right? So you're performing multiple things. For that, service comes into picture. Like service is mainly used to perform things in the background. Like you can keep on perform. Like you won't, uh, you will not want that on Facebook in timeline. Uh, you can only either download or scroll, right? You want user to perform both the actions at once. So that's where the service comes into picture whenever you want to perform some background operation. Content provider. Uh, it's a little complex, I would say, and we don't need it for today's uh, session though, but content provider is basically to share the content be between applications. Like for example, <clears throat> in Facebook, when you say maybe you want to call or maybe in Instagram or like in any app, WhatsApp, okay, let's take an example of WhatsApp. You say you want to send a new message to some contact, okay? So you click on plus or maybe you want to share your contact to somebody else. So you click on plus and share contact and it displays all the contact list to you. Right? So that means that contact system application have defined a content provider. That means they have defined a mechanism by which they can share the data with other application. Otherwise, you cannot share the data that way. So this is content provider. And then broadcast receiver, it's, uh, it's like very simple. Like when we have like fire alarms or something, we broadcast things so that everybody can listen to what's happening in surrounding. So your application, there are a set of, uh, Broad, uh, broadcast that system raise. So your s application can listen to all those broadcasts and they can register a receiver. Like for example, mm, okay, when you're listening to a music, like maybe some MP3 application, when your battery is low, your music stops. So how does your MP3 application knows like your battery is low? So basically that application has registered itself with a broadcast that whenever system will raise a broadcast that mem uh, battery is low, it will act on it. So they are limit, uh, not limited, I would say. Actually, you can define your own broadcast as well, which like one application raised to another application. But there are set of uh, predefined broadcast which Android system raises. So that's what the broadcast receiver is. Does anybody have any doubt in what each component does? We will be using that in our Android Studio project. So I want to make sure that at least you have a basic idea. So when I say activity in Android Studio, I assume that everybody is aware of what activity is. Okay, now, how, okay, this is just like the additional slide, how do you learn more Android? So Android documentation, developers.android.com, this is the best documentation that you can ever have. So they have sample projects, they have everything. Like whenever you have doubt, you can just say Google how to create a button, how to create an activity. And the first link that you will get is from developers.android.com. So make sure to check that out. There are so many Slack groups. Uh, actually, there are Slack groups from Google Android developers as well, like who actually developed Android. You can join them. Medium, there are free code camp, Medium blogs. There are Android, Code Hub, something, something like that. So there are a lot of... Uh, Medium post as well. Yeah, Udemy courses. And the last two are the Slack channels that I talked about. Okay. I think, yeah, enough talk. Let's go. So maybe, the, does anybody have any doubt in that? No? 
is anybody lost <laughs> no okay then i think we can start maybe we all can open our android studio now yeah i assume everybody has their android studio set up so i'm going to move past a little faster uh from this thing so and everybody can see this screen maybe uh you can click on start a new android studio project we'll start from the scratch huh yeah okay what kind of app are we making <laughs> do you have something in mind that you want to create very basic huh alarm uh but alarm will require uh more android api collections to be used rather than basic one so i was thinking maybe uh, like last time we created that login kind of thing right but uh, today we can uh, what we can do like when i learned programming we always used to create first program add two numbers right this is the basic program that we do so maybe today what we can do is we can create two input fields and we'll enter two number and then we'll have a button and on click of that button we'll display what is the sum and if we are able to do that in time then we'll move on to like how to open another activity from one activity like you'll in explain from loading like from welcome to loading from loading to edit activity how to do that okay uh, you can name your application anything that you want i'll name it as ww code app company domain you can ignore project location it, it's basically where it will land up in your computer package name either you can leave it like this but package name for android is always small case letters and follows this pattern like login dot something dot something dot in general if you will see in play store things are like com dot app dot ww code app this is like a general procedure that people follow no hard and fast rule it's just that it has to be small case letters when you are done you can say see as you can see they they have already like included include kotlin support and c++ but today we'll be doing in java so say next this screen will ask you because we have seen that there are different kinds of android devices like phone wear tv android auto but today we are going to create phone and tablet app so let it be checked like the very first check box second one is api as i said that android has released a lot of versions and each version comes with an api like a different set of apis are included uh everybody is familiar with api term right what api is yeah so in each version we have different set of apis minimum this is the minimum api that means your application will not run on any phone which has lower android version than this so uh, api 15 which is ice cream sandwich i think it covers a lot of android market so we can let it be like this and say next it's very supportive like android studio is like seriously smart enough to do a lot of things okay it, it says what kind of application do you want to create like what should your first screen or maybe any screen should look like this now why to work hard when things are already available to us so maybe i can just say empty activity will decide what kind of activity will it look like just say next it has named that main activity so it's again the java naming convention that it follows camel case like starts with capital letter then smaller then second word starts with capital letter and then small case so this will be the activity name you can name it anything that you want it's not necessarily main activity and another one is layout name now what is a layout we said that activity is a screen which we see right now what you see in an activity is defined by layout like button edit text and like toast and list of views or something so that will be defined by layout and our layout name is activity underscore main it's a good naming convention and we are good people we follow the convention so let it be like this and say finish if you are running android studio for the first time it might take a little longer in order to set up the dependencies
Updating which like updating to what? It depends what kind of updates. Like for example, with Mac, Mac OS High Sierra, it really slows down your Mac. So it's recommended that you don't update to that. So yeah, it definitely depends on uh, like it definitely matters what kind of patches are involved in that system. Yeah. Uh, and uh, control. I'm not sure what do you mean by control here, but layout is like visual appearance. Like uh, you see buttons, like for example on Facebook login page, you see username and password and then button, right? So layout is an XML based file which will de define those buttons and those edit text. Okay, so at, yeah, so as Yulin said that it's an M MVC model view controller kind of based. So model view controller, it's like one type of architectural pattern that is used. There are so many. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody can see this fine? Cool. Cool. Shall we? Does it okay? Because uh, not all of us are familiar with Android Studio as well. So just a very quick overview. Like this is how a typical Android Studio like file and the view looks like. What like what are other options in Android Studio that you can explore? This left hand side. This is your project structure view. And when you click on Android, so you see like different kinds of view that you can get into, like project. If you get into project, it will look like this. If you click on packages, it will only show like what kind of packages are there. If you click on Android, it will show you what all files Android is concerned about. I mean, we typically uh, keep project view so that it's clear like, okay, there's an app module, there's something, okay. These small, small directories, like these small, small folders, they are called modules. And here, your Java file, your XML file. Okay, this is our Java file, and this is our XML file, which we were talking about. You have two views in that. One is design, in which you can drag and drop and create views, and another one is text, like you can define or you can code all by yourself if you don't like drag and drop. And on the right hand side, you can see the preview of what your layout looks like. So right now, there's nothing in there. It's all empty. If you go to app and then SRC and then main, so like it automatically created few directories, which is like SRC, then Android test and test. So test and Android test are for like basic unit testing and instrumentation testing, which we will not be focusing for today. So you can just ignore them. And then main, in main we have Java and RES. Java, we just had a look that main activity.java. So it will have all Java files inside it. RES will have all the layout files, okay. Like if you look at layout, we will see activity underscore main.xml. There's nothing in there, so I'm going to close the preview. So we have a lot more option to call. Guys, whenever there is a confusion, please let me know. Or if I'm going too fast, let me know. Or if I'm going too slow, then also let me know. NDK? Yeah, so I'm just like Okay. Your system will start running towards the end of the workshop like <laughs> like before. <laughs> okay? So as we said, yeah. Yeah, okay. What's the error you see? Okay. But what is the error that you are seeing? 
sync failed, yeah. but there should be some message along with it. Why did it fail? If you have the message, right, just click on the link. Yes, yes, rightly said. Whenever you see some Gradle build error, it will show you what kind of error is this and a link to fix that. Just click on it. In case you might be missing some dependencies which is required for Android project. Okay, cool. So as we discussed that we will create two input boxes and one button to add the numbers entered into those input boxes. Now input box, how do we create input box? So there is definitely an API for that, which is like edit text, like the text which can be edited. See how smart is it? Like you just have to start typing and the suggestion that it gives, you just click on that. And uh, what is the width and height like? It's like, uh, as the name says, uh, what kind of width and height it will be covering on main screen. So width, I would say, okay, match parent. Match parent is the like. Match parent is like whatever the screen size is. It will cover up that. Height, I don't want to do height match parent because I want to add more views to that, to the screen. So right now you can just randomly say, let's say 50 dp. Now, what is DP? DP is like density per pixel. Like each screen, it consists of pixels. And density is like in one particular area of that, how many pixels are there. So I just said 50 DP, OK. Now I'm going to assign it an ID as well. Why ID? This is same like. Like right now, in case if I want to address someone of you, I have to know your name, right? Then only I can address. I cannot randomly say, oh, this and that. So in order for Android uh, system to know which edit text is this, or for us to uh, maybe perform functionalities on particular input boxes, we need to know what kind of input box we are dealing with. So I'm going to assign ID say, said like first edit text. And now we can see preview. As we can see in preview, we see one edit text. We can add hint as well, like enter first number. What is this layout? What, what, what should be done after layout? Yeah, layout width. Uh, I kept it as match parent. As I said, like match parent is like it will cover the full screen size. But let's say in case if you don't want that, you can define some 100 dp or maybe you can define like 50 dp, 60 dp, something like that. Or because we are dealing with a very basic layout, Android supports very different kind of layout, like in which you place layouts in position. Like for example, I say you should sit next to some other person rather than saying, oh, you should sit at that place. Like I reference two views. But we are dealing with a very simple layout. So you can like instead of match print, I can say 100 dp. Uh, for now, let's let's go with the basic thing. Like, okay, it's already constant layout, and then let it be match parent. We can beautify our layout afterwards. Like, for example, uh, right now we can make the functionality work. So there is a separate file for constraint layout. Uh, constraint layout. It's an API from Android. There's no file. Like, it's Android dot support dot. And if you want to go to any API details, like for example, android.support.constraint.layout, it's an Android API, you just like command or click, or I guess control or click in Windows. You just click there, 
and it will take you what kind of layout is it. Um, okay, it's completely up to your choice. It's completely up to your choice. Like you can name it one, two, three, four, five, six. But it's that when the project is really big, for example, again, consider WhatsApp or Facebook. Like there are so many views, so many edit them in your code. You should be like when you say first edit text, you should be thinking about okay, it should be the first edit text in the layout. If you name it like one, two, three, four. After a while, you will not realize what does one, two, three, four means. So it's completely up to you. You can. Yeah, it's an identifier for that view. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. What What are you trying to write? Tell me. I'll try to write that here. Okay, it cannot be like this with spaces. Uh, no, you have to follow this pattern. Okay, I'll, I'll delete this and then say you start writing ID and then click on the very first link and then you again see the suggestion, right? Add plus ID will create a new ID. So you have to do this. Okay, so it's like that. It's like format. Yeah, it's like the format that you have to follow. Yes. And those who have created first input box, they can just copy it and paste it. But it will show you an error like, okay, first name edit already exists. So you can just say, second. yes, second, easy enough. Now we don't see it here, right? Okay, I think the base we can do is we can, I'm sorry for this, but we can replace this with relative layout or let's say very basic linear layout because constant layout is a little complex layout. Okay, now it will throw you an error like, okay, linear means you will add views linearly. Now it can mean horizontally or vertically. That's why it's throwing me an error like, okay, what kind of linear layout you want to use? So you say orientation and I want to add them vertically. Uh, if I say uh, horizontal, that will be like side by side. And if I say vertical, that means one below the other. Yeah. You can remove constant layout and type it with linear layout.
those who have already done that maybe just can explore like because it's auto suggestion is quite like powerful and at Android Studio so you can just like Android dot something now what all you can do what ever anything does or something you can just explore it if you're getting bored is it coming side by side you have to define orientation as vertical have you defined orientation vertical Oh, sidebar, it's here, like on the right hand side, you see preview, you click here, on the corner, do you see preview? Yeah, just click there, okay. So now we can see two input boxes, I'll add, now I'll add button, button is very simple, like okay, button is button. Again width is, okay, let's say match parent, height is let's say 50 dp. And we'll give button a name. Okay, add button. And text is like what kind of text do we want to show on that button? I want to say add. So as you can see, like you keep on writing and it will keep on displaying on the right hand side. Yes. So, yeah, it's looking very ugly, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. So, let's let's give some space. Space is very much needed in life. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's give space between number 1 and number 2. And Yeah, and let's let's give a space between number 1 and number 2 and then number 2 and add as well. Okay, and how to give space? It's it's a linear layout. That means views are placed linearly. So you can just say margin top, like how much it should space from the top view. You can just say this and I'm going to say like maybe 20 dp as we can see the difference there. And for button as well, I'll say margin top and I'll say 20 dp. Does it look beautiful now? Better, right? Do you want to add color as well? I think I, we should add color. R G B okay zero zero five zero zero. No, I like red. No. Shall we move next? Okay, okay, cool. Did you have given this, uh, this margin top, highlighted one.
on top of the other uh, well if it's linear layout it will never come on top of the other it will be like sticking to each other that's it like uh, number one number two and then button it cannot come it cannot cover the other view but if it's relative layout in that case it can cover other views relative layout is basically meant for like we have three views so we specify okay this view should be shown in relation to this view and if you do not specify any relation they will cover each other so that's why I chose like the simpler layout like linear layout I don't need to define relations like it's already like linear relation yeah Then, yeah. what happened? Um, the rendering is not happening properly. Yeah, sometimes actually, sometimes because of the memory issue, how much RAM do you have? 8, 16? So, no. <laughs> so actually it happens because it needs a lot of uh, RAM and like memory management. So sometimes that doesn't happen. So it's okay. If your code looks like this, your screen will look like this only, even if it doesn't render on the right hand side. <laughs> We'll see in the emulator in the next. Now, shall we move next? Anybody stuck anywhere? Can you move? You have said orientation. As vertical. No need to write full thing, just start writing or O R I E N and it will suggest you and this then just hit enter and is there some confusion? Yes, if it's in red color, something is wrong in it. Okay, let's say I remove this. It becomes red in color, right? That's what you mean? Red color. Yeah, right now it's red color, right? It's yellow. Ah, no, this, oh, you, you mean to say this whole layout isn't, okay, let me try. No, it's not red. How come it's red? The first one, would you give if it's like this, then you can hover on it and it will tell you oh, wrong orientation, no orientation specified. Then we'll specify orientation. And there you have given the color. Color? I haven't given any color. But if you want to give color, let's say, to button, like what should be, the, right now it's gray. If you want to gray, give color, you just say, oh, background. What should be the background color? Then it's it takes like a... Uh, hex of the color so you can say just hash and then like rgb ff something like if it's red then ff 0000 so it will be red Is it lo looking like this for you? Like, okay.
Done? Cool. Shall we move next? Okay. Now we know that we have designed our layout. Now, how do what do we do? We have to actually perform the functionality, like take the number from first ed, first input box, second input input box, and when I click on add, it should add. But I think we should add a text view as well, so that we can display what is the sum. So edit text is text which can be edited and text view is something just for display. Like just set the text and it will display. You, if you click on it or if you do something with it, nothing will happen. So again, I'll say match parent and I'll again say, let's say 50 dp. And I'll give margin. I'll, I'm going to give a lot of margin this time. Here I will display the result. Like in case if I set text here, it should, okay. Okay, don't worry about all these things for now. Yeah, just create a text view and let's give it an identifier and we'll say result text view. Why am I following this particular convention is like camel case, like small r and then capital T and capital V. It's like standard Java naming convention. So basically this is what I'm going to do. Like we'll enter one number here, we'll enter another number here. And then when I click here, it should display the sum here. Right now, on right hand side, you don't see, like you see button and first input box and second input box, but no text because there's nothing set on it. Until you set some text on something like it, what, what will it display? It will be just blank. Done? Cool. So now we are done with our design. Now we'll go to main activity like the Java file where we will define actions like what will happen on what. This statement, set content view which is like already there from Android Studio. This says that okay when this screen is shown to the user, this layout should be inflated. And in this layout we know what we have like two input boxes, one button and something. Now comes the main part. We have created a button and what we want to do is on click of that button, we want to take both the input numbers and add it and set on the text view that we have designed. So we have to have a button. Now it will say, okay, import that button. So you just say import class. It's already an API from Android. This is like in any programming language, creating a variable of a specific type. So I'm creating a variable of type button. I'm going to name it as add button and we have given an identifier to this button, right? So how do we find that identifier? So there's a function for that, which is like find view by ID. Yeah, just raise the question. You can just shout it out. Build tools. Did you click on it and install them? So when you see this find view by ID, you just click here. And you try to find that identifier. And how to find that identifier, you just type write r dot r file is the generated file by Android system which keeps a track of all the identifiers. So whenever you want to find out, like for example, in this class, 
if I maintain a register or maybe an Excel sheet which contains all of your names. So if I want to look up to something, I'll go to that Excel sheet and start searching for it. Yeah. It's this similar like uh, analogy here. So R is that register or that Excel sheet which contains all the identifiers. So you just say R. Now what, what did we uh, assign it to? ID. So you say ID and you can already see the possible IDs that is there. And seriously, this is that smart enough that it's showing add button as the first suggestion. So you just say add button. And because it's Java, we have to add semicolon in the end. You have to import it if it's not imported. Just click on it and it will say import. For those uh, like uh, for those whom button is not imported, it will give you an error like this, right? Red button and this, but when you hover over it, it says like in Mac, it's oh, are you see? Ah, come on. Like it's just command and enter. Uh -huh. When it was read, uh, you prompt to it, it say Alt and Enter. So what does it mean? Alt and Enter? Yeah, uh, I, I, so uh, basically what I just did is like uh, it's a shortcut to import something. Like earlier it was like for example this statement is not there and it will throw me an error cannot resolve button like it says that this is not important in this class so i just go there and and, and i say command enter so it will just it's a shortcut for importing i have been using shortcuts that much that i forgot how to do it manually now Yeah, and then say import class. Are you able to import button? No. May I check? What does it say? There. Yeah, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll come to this error. Like, what is this error? This is a different error than import. Okay, those of you, of you who are getting this error, like a red line below this, this is because this returns a view. Now, we are trying to assign this view into a button. So we need to explicitly typecast it. So those who are getting that error, just type, uh, sorry. Just typecast it with button. Like, okay, you are returning me a view, but it should look like button. It should, uh, it should remove your error. It removed, right? Yeah. Clear? Cool. So now next, what are we going to do is we were about to define an action on click of this button. Simple enough, say add button because now we have this variable which represents a button and say set on, start writing this, set on click. This is how we define a click action on anything. You'll see the first suggestion is set on click listener. 
now we want to define a new action so how do we define a new action you start writing n e w which is new and it's a on click action you start writing on click and it will throw you a suggestion right yeah just hit enter it will auto complete it for you so basically this is kind of we have created a new on click action and here we have to like i'm just adding a comment like define what do we want to do like we we want to take number from input box 1 and 2 and then add them and then set it to the text view and like this is generally a comment which will never get executed by android this is just for the understanding purpose now what uh, what did we define input box as edit text right so in order to get the number from edit text we need to again create variables of edit text so what i'm going to do is edit text and i'm going to name first num edit text i'm going to again say find view by id r dot i id dot this time similar way i will create another variable so i'm just going to copy and paste it so that i don't have to write it i'm going to name it as second and here as well i'm going to name it as second those who are using mac you can just say command d this command d so like it will just copy the above line simple yes. we created two variables now what do we want to do we want to check numbers from both the variables okay int because we want to add them so ultimately it's just like int in java so i'll say num1 which should be first number edit text dot okay edit text has a function which is like get text what it will return is it's a input box right so whatever you will write in there this method will return me whatever has been written in that input box now it will throw you an error because this if you go here as i said like you can go to the definitions of this get text returns editable which is ultimately a string type but we are trying to assign a string to number which is like integer so definitely it will throw this error so this is like i'm going to parse it this is java convention this is like typical java what happened parse not parse okay get text is editable so we have to convert it to string <coughs> and command d no not here command d which is like i'm going to take the second number as well so we have number 1 and number 2 just copy paste that line and rename the variables once you have this third one is pretty like final result okay we'll say result equal to num1 plus num2 this is like a simple java statement let me know if anybody is not following what we are doing right now Has any doubt in why did we do integer dot percent? 
No. Okay, cool. So now we have the result. Now, what is the final step? We have to show that result into the text view that we have created. So we're gonna again do, we're gonna create a variable, which is like text view. We're gonna name it as result text view. I'm gonna say find view by ID. And once you have text view with you, what do you want to do? You want to just set the result to the text view. So you want to say result text view dot set text. There's a method called set text. You just say set text and what do you want to show? You want to show result on that. For those who are seeing the error, like again, the red line here, it might throw an error because result is an integer. And if you go to set text, it takes string resource. You might see my definition a little bit different because I have enabled all the Kotlin support and different supports in my Android Studio. So basically set text takes a string and we are trying to set integer. It might throw an exception, not might, it will throw an exception. So the easiest way for converting an integer to a string is like concatenate it with double quotes. A string is always written in this form like double quotes and something. So if you have number, you just concatenate that with string, it will give you a string. Take your time because functionality wise we are done. The next step is to launch the application. Any doubts? Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between like gravity and layout? Okay, uh, layout. Okay, for example, in your screen, I have de uh, defined that width should should be match parent or like maybe, let's say if it was thirty uh, thirty dp or hundred dp. So layout gravity is where should the layout should be placed. Like for example, if you say layout gravity should be center horizontal. Okay, so that means let's say if your layout has a width of 100 dp, it will cover the center 100 dp, not like the la left or the right or something. The layout would be placed in center of the screen, like center horizontally. But apart from that, when you say Android gravity, gravity is the content inside that layout. Like for example, if you have a text view and it has a width of 100 dp, okay, so inside the screen, Okay, let's say this, I'll explain it here. Instead of match parent, I'll say 150 dp. So see, right now it is on the left hand side, right? Let's try to assign it gravity. Come on. And I say center horizontal. It's in there. But now, if you see, I'll uh, set some text to it, let's say um, result 
text. The text itself is on the left hand side, right? If I say only gravity, not the layout gravity, if I say text, now the text is in center horizontal. So one is in, in respect of the full layout and the other one like Android column gravity is in respect of the content inside the layout. Like if you say center vertically, so it's on the left but vertically. If you say center, so it will be like center horizontal and vertical. So yeah, let's say if you say, uh, if you remove this, so the layout will come towards the left because we haven't given any layout gravity, but we have given content gravity which is center, so it will be in the center. Clear? Cool. Okay, done? Let's, okay, now try to run it, but I don't have any emulator running. So we'll go to tools, in case if you haven't created any emulator, and we'll go to Android, tools and Android, and AVD manager. AVD manager is Android virtual device manager. I'm gonna delete this so that okay so if you haven't created any virtual device yet your screen should look like this okay now i'm going to create a new virtual device pick your like i like pixel so i'll create pixel and say next it's going to ask you what kind of android device do you want to simulate like you want to based on api level in case if you do not have any android virtual device API is downloaded, you need to, like for example, Lollipop, which is 22, it says download. It, it's virtual image is not downloaded yet. So you click on download and then it will become like this so that you can select and create an Android virtual device with that particular API level. I'm gonna create it with Marshmallow, which is like 23, and then say, or maybe Nogat, and say next, and then say finish, nothing else. Virtual device is created. Once you have created that, then you can, when you will click here, you can see virtual devices to run with. In case if you have Android phone with you and USB cable, we can launch in your phone as well. But let, let's first try with emulator because launching in your personal phone is quite easy. You select this and you say okay. Yeah, we'll come to that, but first let's try to run that in emulator. That will be faster, launching it in your own device will be faster than this, but. I forgot your name. Uh, Revati. Now you are a proficient Android developer. Why don't you help out other people in whatever problem they are facing? <laughs> yes. Of course. Last time also you developed an application. Yeah. Mm. From constraint to linear? Uh, earlier it was constraint layout. So constraint layout is a bit complex in which you have to define different constants, uh, constraints in respect to the screen, like where should it land, what should be the X position, what should be the Y position. Yeah, yeah, so I, I like simplified it and I put like linear layout here. Just put linear layout here. And if it shows you an error, then you have to define orientation as well here. 
Did you have downloaded images like yeah. Android images? I would have done that before. Okay, we'll go again. Android and AVD Manager. Okay, I'm gonna delete this. And I'm gonna delete this as well. So if we have any images inside the emulator, we'll have this. So sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it should show. So you say, like, let's say, okay. Okay, next is five. Next. Actually, it's. it depends what kind of platform does it use. Okay, let's try it. See, um, okay, recommend it. Okay, we'll use this. See, next, so finish. I did click on finish. Okay, let's try to run this if it's running. Cannot launch. Okay, I'm gonna show advanced settings. Not like, do you have uh, Android phone with you? Yeah. Do you have cable? Yeah. Can you give me cable and instead of like wasting our time and fixing this issue, we'll rather. Can you open your phone and go to? I have the debug mode. You you have the debug debuggable mode. Yeah. Then just launch it in your phone. What do you do with like the text view? Text view? Yeah. There's this text view, which is here. I'm going to display result over here, like what is the sum of two input numbers. Yep. And those who are able to launch the application, just go to your application and say, maybe you wanna try to add number and then say, oh, it's too small. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna increase the text size a bit. I'm gonna say, let it be 30 SP. Okay, what is DP, what is SP? Uh, SP is is like scale independent. So whenever you define like text sizes, you define that in SP. Whenever you define like dimensions, like margin and all these things, you define that in DP. Why SP? Because it should be dependent on what you set your font size in your phone. So in Android phone, you can change your font size. Like it should be large, it should be medium or something. So when you say, if you set DP here, it will not change when you change the font size in your phone. So it has to be SP. Okay, now 30, like we can see here, let's try to add some text. So, okay, this big it will look, we can actually, and then we can set the gravity as well, that it should be center horizontal. This is just beautification. So right now, don't worry about it, but you can add text size because it's it was looking really small. And when you do this, Let's say I'm going to try just to make sure that it's not hard coded and it actually works. So 10, 10, it should display. Oh, oh, I haven't run the app again. So I'm just running the app again. Okay, now I'll say 10 and 10 and then say add 20. <laughs> so we learned how to sum two numbers today. Back to the basics of programming. Clear enough?
is anybody facing any problem with launching the application and then like something is not shown or maybe throwing some exception or some crashing? Yeah, the, I was thinking that if everybody is able to do this, then maybe we can do a quick like five minutes to like how to debug when your app runs into an error. That's really important because most of the time things doesn't work in first chance. I'm just I'm just gonna make it crash one second. It crashed. Okay, let's forget about why did it crash, but somehow it crashed, okay? And when I entered 10 and 10, okay, I'll do it again to see what does crash means. Crash means the app, like you'll see this kind of dialogue when app crashes. This is a common terminology in Android development. When you say add, it will say it keeps stopping or unfortunately it has stopped, something like this. So somehow it crashed now. Now, when did it crash? When I actually clicked on add, right? So how to debug these kind of things? Now I know that something wrong happened in on click because by the time I entered two numbers, nothing happened. But when I clicked on add, it crashed. So in your Android Studio on this, where the line numbers are displayed, you just click, it's called a breakpoint. Okay? Now, you close your app again and okay got it where is our application ww code app now you know that app crashes when you click on add by this point we are safe now i'm going to attach a debugger to this debugger means it will take me step by step into what is happening so if you can see this android debugger this option you just click here and it will ask you like, okay, what do you want to debug? So it will show your app if your app is running. And then you say, okay. Sometimes it may take a while to attach the debugger. Okay, it's attached. When, you, when it's attached, you'll see this kind of message that connected to the target. And you'll see a checkbox here. This checkbox means that this code will be executed if app is running. Not the checkbox, like the tick. Okay, now you click add and it comes here. Because we knew that this is the on click function. Now this is how the debugger mode looks like in Android. This is like what all methods it has been through, whether it's Android internal calls, like for example, perform click. This is from Android view. So this is like internal to Android. So we see that as well. Then it came to on click main activity. Okay. Here you can see the variables values that you have created. Like for example, okay. And in run, you see step over, step into, if you are familiar with like programming, any debugging, step over means go to the next step. Do not go into details of this step. Step into means just go into the details of the particular step and step out means if you have gone into the details of the step then come out of that step i suggest that you remember that step over is f8 step into is f7 so okay we don't want to go into details find view by id because we knew that it was working so we don't want to go into details so i'm just going to say f8 and it goes to the next line even in variables, you can see now first name edit text contains some edit text. You don't want to know like it's a huge detail like okay, what it uh, like text helper and something and something. You, you don't want to go there. Now you say F8 again. So now we have two variables which are already in memory, which is like first number edit text and second number edit text. Okay, everything is fine until here. If it passes through every step, that means things are working fine by now. Now you see num1 is 10. 
because we have already entered 10 into this. Okay, so this step is also fine. Again, F8, num2 is 10. So that means that step is also fine. F8, oh, the result is 20. So that means even this step is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with this step. F8, again, so now you see result text view also contains some information about Android view. So that means this step, this step was also fine. Now we are on the last step. And if you, if you do F8 here, then you'll go into some Android internal details call. And that will happen only if your app did not behave the expected way. If it would have behaved the expected way, it would have come out of that on-click function, but it didn't. And it went something here like, then you'll see some random messages, logging null and this and that. So that means that statement was the culprit. Okay, even if you say okay, and you go to lock cat, do you see lock cat here? You click here. When your app crashes, I'm just gonna enlarge it. I hope everybody's able to see this. When your app crashes in general, you will see a fatal exception in lock cat, which will explain what happened, like what wrong happened. And if you see here, it said that resource not found string resource ID, Okay, like if you'll keep on uh, fixing multiple fatal exceptions, you will realize okay, what kind of error is this? Like when do you get this error? So basically you get this error when you try to set an integer to a text view. This is what we did in here. See, I removed the concatenation with string and I'm trying to set an integer on the text view. So it says, oh no, I cannot find this string. So if you just do this, and then run the app, like right now it, it was crashing, right? Now you enter 10 and 10 and say add, so everything will work fine. So whenever your app crashes or something wrong happened, I would suggest like how to go with that. Initially add logs everywhere, like how do you add log? Android logging is like quite powerful, okay. Add log at every step because that you can remove, right? And that you can see even in your log cat so that you know at which step you were okay with the process and at which step it failed. So you can just say L-O-G, which is Android Util, then say D. This is like verbose or debug or you wanna mention that there was some error. So this is, D is for debug, like just an informative message you wanna print. You can name anything, like you can tag it with anything. This is the tag with which you can filter your logs. And then say, got number one plus what is the number one value? Like if you print these logs, then got number two, and then say, okay, got result. Now, for example, if something wrong would have happened in number two, this thing, then your these logs will not get printed because something wrong happened with the application. So you know, okay, until here, things were working because you saw this log. Like for example, right now we will run this application so that we can see the logs. And I'll say 10 and say 10 and I'll say add 20. Now I'm gonna filter with this log. Okay. And this is the filter thing. So see, if you see WW code, so I said got number one, okay, I could have given some space. Got number one, 10, got number two, 10, got result 20. If something wrong would have happened, you would not have gotten all the logs. And that way it will be easier for you to figure out, okay, what exactly happened, where exactly things went wrong. A string, but we were setting integer. Yes, yes. By concatenating, so this is the very easiest way to, okay, other thing would have been, oh, it's small, this thing, so. It will not, actually, 
string you you will create string builder and then do this so as i said the easiest way and because it's a you know it's a primitive type it's not the wrapper type integer so the easiest way to convert anything into string is like concatenate that with string Uh, yeah so uh, okay result text view dot set text now you don't know what set text uh, expects right so you go there like click and you go into android so this is like android documentation this is the actual text view dot java like from the android api and if you see here see it expects a char sequence char sequence is nothing but a string only or you can read about it like what kind of parameters it expects and sometimes these kind of errors are like really dangerous like if i don't do this it like id doesn't throw me an error like what i'm trying to do it will only throw you an error when you when you will try to run the app so yeah it happens shit happens yeah so i think everybody is able to see 10 plus 10 is 20 right <laughs> So yeah that's it guys that's it for today and if you have any questions do let me know or you in low she is already a good android developer she is a great contributor for miki and please yeah do test it even i contributed a bit of android in that but do test it uh, split bill uh, and uh, if you are learning android i would suggest that you also participate in we have our own slack group now. yeah Yeah, we have our own yeah, Mickey Slack cool. group, yes. so you guys can join that Slack channel, and then you can, yeah, you can contribute to that project. That would be the easiest way to oh, learn okay. Android. <laughs> okay, thank you guys.